My name is Peggy Flanagan. My Ojibwe name is Speaks with a Loud and Clear Voice Woman. Um, I'm a member of the wider nation and I'm really honored and humbled uh, to be here with all of you uh, today. And I have to say, uh, coming out of NCAI and being able to, um, being an alum is a big deal. Uh, I'm grateful for the time that I had with this organization and grateful for the continued leadership of everyone who is here. Um, it's always my honor to be uh, here with you, and I have to say, um, the governor, Governor Walls, and I were so grateful to be able to be with you in Shakopee. Um, we had a, a wonderful time. I hope you enjoyed yourself in Minnesota um, and uh, spent a lot of money in Minnesota. Um, but we are um, grateful to be here with you, of course, uh, in DC as well. Um, so President Macaro spoke yesterday about the need for our people to be safe and to be protected. And I'm gonna expand a little bit on that uh, here this morning. As leaders uh, of a state that shares land with 11 sovereign tribal nations, Governor Tim Walls and I have prioritized partnering with each tribal nation to build authentic and meaningful government to government relationships. And thank you. Uh, and some of those tribal leaders are here, so they can keep us honest. We want to model to all states that tribes are valuable partners for leadership in any state. States benefit overall when they learn to recognize that tribal nations are not simply stakeholders, the way that state government might think of advocacy organizations or nonprofits. Tribal nations are separate sovereigns that must be respected as unique and individual nations with a right to self-governance and self-determination and the inherent authority to govern themselves and their communities. One of the strongest ways that we can honor tribal sovereignty as a state is to trust that tribes have the best solutions for their people and to listen and to learn from them. Tribes are our partners in so many ways. You are all economic drivers in your regions. You provide jobs and health care for your community, your employees, and families of your employees. You create housing, provide education, and manage natural resources. So let's be clear, every issue affects tribal nations and tribal members. But ensuring the safety of your communities can be one of the most intense responsibilities for anyone. Violence and unsafe environments are the things that we've been dealing with for far too long. I'm grateful for the work of the VAWA task force who are here at NCI meeting, and I'm grateful for the work of the Missing and Murdered Unit within the Bureau of Indian Affairs Office of Justice Ser Services. I'm proud that Minnesota was the first state in the nation to open a Missing and Murdered Indigenous Relatives Office, and grateful for the work that they've been doing especially in creating a reward fund uh, called They Will Be Remembered Forever, an account offering financial rewards for information on in unsolved cases. But what if we imagined for a moment that unsolved cases weren't a thing at all? What if there were sufficient resources and enforcement to ensure that violence was prevented or in a worst case, responded to appropriately? In a perfect world, we wouldn't need law enforcement agencies or officers, but that's not our reality. In Minnesota, Native people make up a little more than 1% of the population, but last year we accounted for 4% of the victims who were reported murdered. We can't even be certain that it was only 4%. Who knows how many were falsely reported or never reported at all? I know that this is true for all of your communities as well. Nationally, almost 9% of all people reported missing to the National Criminal In uh, Information Center were Native. Almost 60% were female and under the age of 17. There are a lot of reasons why this is our truth, but one of the longest lasting issues is the general confusion about criminal jurisdiction in Indian country. And even more concerning is the failure to recognize the inherent right of tribal nations to police themselves on their own lands. And sadly, this jurisdictional problem is unique to Indian country. It will never make sense that our tribes do not have the inherent right as sovereign people to enforce criminal laws over all people, native or not, who commit crimes on their land. 
I realize that criminal jurisdiction in Indian country is confusing, especially in a public law 280 state like Minnesota, but it shouldn't be this confusing. As a policymaker and as lieutenant governor, there are ways that the state can partner with tribes to address this jurisdictional confusion. Because in the end, the ones who suffer from the problems are the victims and their communities. In 2019, we were proud to work with the Prairie Island Indian community to change the law that required them to obtain county approval before their licensed and legitimate law enforcement officers can enforce laws on tribal land. It was an important step, but this law only applied to Prairie Island and the impact on the remaining 10 tribal nations wasn't clear. We have stressed the importance of the collaboration and partnership with tribal nations within the borders of Minnesota as a key priority of our administration. Sadly, we learned from example where one of those cooperative law enforcement agreements lapsed between one of the tribes and a county that was partially located within the reservation boundaries. As a result, tribal law enforcement would conduct investigations of crimes committed by non-native people, but then county law enforcement would not intervene or take over the case. Tribes should not have to rely on a county to respond to and investigate crimes to ensure that timely justice is provided to victims. As you can all imagine and probably experience, people figured out this jurisdictional hole quickly. You can't even arrest me, was heard far too often by tribal law enforcement. And victims heard, no one cares, until now. Last year, we signed this bill recognizing what should have always been true. Tribal nations within Minnesota no longer need to obtain a cooperative agreement with counties to exercise state criminal jurisdiction within their tribal lands because we trust tribal nations to know what is best for their own communities, just as all of you know what is best for your communities. And I'm so grateful to the tribal nations and for our legislators who came together to work on this important law to ensure that our people are seen and heard and valued and protected and believed and safe. I hope Minnesota can be an example to other state and federal policymakers on the powerful on the power of building authentic government to government and meaningful relationships. And as the governor frequently says, when tribes do better, the entire state of Minnesota does better. Here we would argue that the inherent rights of tribes to police themselves and others on their lands is recognized and respected. That means that everyone is safer. So to echo President Makaro's speech from the State of Indian Nations yesterday, our people deserve to be safe. Chi miigwech, and thank you so much for this opportunity to address you and for the work that you do every day on behalf of our people. Thank you.